Hello, good evening, and welcome back. This video is going to be a bit of a fun one, just because I haven't read through this entire article, but I just found it hilarious because Marco Pierre White is brutal. And at the beginning of this, I would like to preface it by saying he was the teacher for Gordon Ramsay. He was Gordon Ramsay's mentor. And he is the only man that I know of to have made Gordon Ramsay cry. So, <laughs> with that preface in mind, let's read on. Marco Pierre White is branded a rambling dinosaur for saying women are more emotional than men in the kitchen and not physically strong enough to carry heavy pans. <laughs> Would you like them with a serving of red pills? Former Michelin star chef 57 says men absorb pressure better than women. <laughs> Just like my new pressure cooker. Okay. He said female chefs take things personally and have to ask men to carry pans. Chef Sophie Mitchell said she is fucking sick of this shit, prevalent in kitchens. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> like he's just saying, yeah, th there's a difference between men and women. Deal with it. Get out of my kitchen. <laughs> if you can't handle the heat, get out of the kitchen. It's fun that though, isn't it? Because, bear in mind, he's now saying, um, maybe women shouldn't be in the kitchen. And of course, you know, the, the feminists are saying, no, women should be in the kitchen. It's like, <laughs> okay. Hmm, sure. Women go in the kitchen again. Is that what you want? Hang on. Oh, there's no pleasing you. Okay, right. So let's read on. Absolute beast. Marco Pierre White has been slammed for saying women are more emotional in the kitchen and not physically strong enough to carry heavy pans. The absolute mad lad. The Michelin star chef 57 said men absorb pressure better and don't take things personally. Which is ironic because Sophie Mitchell is taking this personally. He claims female chefs are more emotional. <laughs> You're only proving his point here. And cannot handle the stress of a busy kitchen because they're unable to carry heavy pots and pans themselves, having to ask male colleagues to do it for them. <laughs> you got to hand it to short people. Otherwise, they can't reach. His comments have sparked fury, with Chef Sophie Mitchell branding them bullshit. That's not taking things personally and being overly emotional. <laughs> not at all. Now, uh, <laughs> please hand her that pan. Get back in the kitchen, Sophie. Isn't that what you wanted? White told the Irish Independent, The real positive with men is that men can absorb pressure better. That's the main difference. Because they are not as emotional and they don't take things personally. He added, Look at the size of some of the pans you are carrying. Can you imagine you are lady in the kitchen saying, Will you carry that pan for me? <laughs> you don't want to say that, do you? So men are physically stronger and they can absorb the pressure of the kitchen better. Ah, <laughs> oh, I, I love it. Restaurant owner Neil Rankin shared the article on Instagram, calling Pierre White a rambling dinosaur, spouting nauseating, baseless, antiquated bullshit. That's almost a Stephen Fry insult. I like it. My own food and, food and drink director, Miss Mitchell, responded on Instagram, I'm fucking sick of this shit, and it's prevalent for your information across the board. Again, proving his point. TV presenter Julia Bradbury, I'm sure she's gonna prove his point as well, commented, I haven't read the full story. Oh, short attention span. And that, that's also the problem uh, that often articles will put a uh, clickbait, catchy um, title. And also, even worse, they'll add something in there that isn't really true. And then at the end of the article, clarify it, knowing that about 80% of people don't read past the first paragraph, let alone to the end of the article. Um, but, yeah, I haven't read the full story. But obviously, there are lots of examples of male chefs behaving very busy and emotionally in the kitchen. Yeah, so it's a what about isn't it? Or, no, you, your mum gay. Swearing, ranting, abusing colleagues. This is food, not the front line, and everyone should be treated with respect. Yeah, do, do you know the industry where there's the, the highest rate of drug use? It's food. It's chefs. Uh, which, which won't explain why there was that McDonald's customer who found a, a blunt in her burger. So, yes, yes, the, the chef was stoned. That's to be expected. I say chef in McDonald's, but nonetheless, I'll, I'll treat them with respect. Why not? White was the youngest chef of his time to be awarded three Michelin stars. So he knows what he's talking about. He became notorious for throwing customers out of his restaurants if he didn't like their behaviour. Oh, I love it. Uh, this is as far as I got. More recently, White's long-running feud with Jamie Oliver surfaced again when he hit out at the celebrity chef for linking Brexit to the demise of his restaurant empire. I love this. He accused Oliver of being delusional and hinted the failure of his business had more to do with the horrific weight endured by customers, citing his own experiences when dining at one of his restaurants. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's just extreme ownership, so I just... It's, it's your fault. White said, I have read Jamie is blaming his business failure on Brexit, but I really don't understand that at all. Wouldn't that mean that all restaurants have gone bust too? I don't think he can blame Brexit. It's the lamest <laughs> excuse in the world. I think it is wrong to blame Brexit. We're all in the same boat. If it's Brexit's fault, we'd all be bust. 
How can you blame everyone but yourself? Is he delusional? <laughs> oh, can we hear more of this guy? Oh, I, I know, I've, I've heard a story uh, flying to, to France, Paris when he was 17, not really knowing what he was doing, but just knowing he wanted to be a chef. Um, he's, he's, he's a crazy guy, he's, he's mad, but he's brilliant. Um, let's, let's read on, I haven't got this far. Michael Pierre White slams delusion with Jamie Oliver. Yep, okay, we, we got that. Uh, the Naked Chef sold 25 of his Italian barbecue and 15 eateries closed in May when the brands went into administration with around a thousand jobs lost. Mr. Oliver blamed the failures on the high street becoming uberfied and the uncertainty of Brexit causing people's eating habits to change. What? So we're going? We're not going to be a part of Italy. So I don't want any Italian food. Is that what you're saying? But speaking at his steakhouse bar and grill restaurant at the Cube in Birmingham, White dismissed the claims and questioned whether Mr. Oliver was delusional. I got long-running feud, yep. Uh, with Mr. Oliver previously calling White a Mafia Don type character. <laughs> I can see that. After he was branded a fat chef with a trumpet by White. <laughs> oh, I don't get into the drama, but these insults are brilliant. I'm sure you've seen the 30-minute um, meals with Jamie Oliver, and part, part of the intro is all fun and quirky. Is him hitting pans uh, with a with, with a wooden spoon, and it's a good show. Fifty minute meals, thirty minute meals, all of that. I I like it, and I've learned stuff from his shows. And now I've graduated onto somebody who knows what they're doing. So he added he had previously had a horrific experience at a Jamie Oliver restaurant at Gatwick Airport last year due to the wait for his food, suggesting the service may also have had an impact on a drop in trade. Um, yeah, we've read this. Um, Sweet on. So both times I had to wait a very long time for my food, it was horrific. We all make mistakes, we all have bad days. But I've got to say, it was consistently bad on both occasions. It wasn't my decision to eat there both times. The people I was with chose to go there. But you wouldn't want to go to another Jamie's after that. <laughs> I love a man with standards. Even if you enjoyed your food, bad service always leaves a sour taste in the mouth. Well, yeah, he's got three Michelin stars, so Jamie Oliver. Yeah, Jamie Oliver. The pair, but as I say, Jamie Oliver is, is a great entry-level guy. The pair have been embroiled in previous war of words over the past decade, with Mr. Oliver calling him a psychological bully in 2014. He did make Ramsey cry, yes. But he added he did not hate White and added he was once his childhood hero. Yes, yes, and it seems you didn't grow up. Uh, let's see. Uh, reading on. A year later, he claimed... Uh, this is White again. Claim Mr. Oliver was not a real chef because he never won a Michelin star and was therefore not accepted by the chef world. Oh, this mad lad. Uh, White has his own food franchise, Black and White Hospitality, following a stellar career in the kitchen, um, where he was the first British chef to win three Michelin stars by the age of 32, also becoming the youngest in the world to achieve that accolade. White's groups own the rights to eight brands bearing his name and has locations in New York and Abu Dhabi. There's also one in Manchester, just by the gay village, but I, I won't question why that's there. White Steakhouse and Grill, I believe it is. Explaining his own approach to business, White said, I franchise my brands out to owners, then my team and I do the menus, pricing, choose the decor, lighting, music. Makes a lot of sense. If I don't like the colour of the ceiling, I'll get it changed. In the past, I've lowered the ceilings in places, because lower ceilings mean a more buzzy dining atmosphere, and romance is very important for a restaurant. Yet, as a franchiser, I don't pay the business rates Jamie did, but I work seven days a week. If I'm in the UK, I'll regularly be at one of the restaurants, checking everything is okay. I don't... <laughs> just... If I'm in the UK. Okay, humble brag. I don't think Jamie could have gone to Gatwick. Had he gone to Gatwick, then he would have realised there were problems there. It's not enough to put your name above the door. There's nothing wrong with expanding, but you have to have the infrastructure in place. People who understand the restaurant business working for your brand. I don't think Jamie had that. Okay, reading on. Because uh, that's just between him and... Uh, between Oliver and White. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, that's... Basically it, but uh, let's let's have a, a closing comment from um, from Oliver. Then I think so. Mr. Oliver recently said the last few months had been the most disappointing of his life. He told the Times, "I did believe I could turn it around. I put in three million pounds, another three million pounds, then another three million pounds. Wherever the numbers went, Jesus, nine million quid." But there was no good news. Yeah, Mail Online has contacted Oliver's representatives for comment. But uh, I, I I love Pierre White. He's absolute mad lad, the beast, he's unforgiving, he doesn't care, and uh, that that kind of thing pleases me tremendously, especially when he's just, he's 57, so he's not really an old fogey, but he just speaks his mind and doesn't really care about the consequences, and it's, it's that kind of thing that's, that's heartwarming for me, anybody who cuts through the crap. Uh, what have we got from their comments? 
Um, do agree, men are physically stronger than women, and that's the top way to comment. Oh, that's nice. And it's also, I'm sure you're the same, that when you're speaking with people, that you can just tell them this without dressing it up in intersectionality. Just say it straight, and then people say, yes, that's obvious. Of course I agree with that. But then you can put through it a lens of intersectionality and uh, cultural Marxism, and then people agree with the opposite. So it essentially just comes down to phrasing. If you're honest and blunt with people, then they speak the truth. Um, but when they're indoctrinated and don't understand what words mean anymore, basically a university graduate, then you, you're going to agree with some odd bullshit and then try and make some mental gymnastics to understand. For example, now the, the lady, Chef Mitchell, saying uh, that women should be in the kitchen. It's brilliant. I, I love it. Anyway, that's it for now. Let me know what you guys think. Um, I, I just saw this and thought, oh, this is amazing. I have to share this. Somebody's speaking out. It's great. Um, always intrigued to hear what you guys have to say, to read what you guys have to say in the comments below. So let me know, and I will see you next time. Have a good one.